Hello everyone, I am Dr. Adarsh Deep, Associate Professor at Government College for Women, Sector 14, Panchkula. Today's topic is Insect Pests of Sugarcane. Insect pests are the main sources of biotic stress on the crops. There are hundreds of insects that can cause serious damage to the crops. They reduce the yield and quality of the crop. They may be borers, they may be suckers, and the affected plant may get secondary infections of the fungus and other microbes. They may be monophagous if they feed on only one species. They may be oligophagous if they feed on a plants of one family. And they may be called as polyphagous if they feed on a very large number of cultivated and wild plants. In this lecture, we will cover up the pest of sugarcane only. After completing the chapter, you will be able to know about the systematic position, habits, nature of damage, life cycle and control of sugarcane leaf hopper. The zoological name is Pyrilla purpusilla. You will also be able to know about the systematic position, habits, nature of damage of sugarcane white fly, sugarcane top borer, sugarcane root borer and gurdaspur borer. So let us start one by one. So the important pest of sugarcane, botanical name of which is Saccharum officinarum or sugarcane leaf hopper. Zoological name is Pyrela purpusilla, sugarcane white fly, Allurolobus barodensis, sugarcane top borer, Scirpophaga nivella, sugarcane root borer, Amelocera depressella, and Gurdaspur borer, Bicetia stanulus. First of all, we will study sugarcane leaf hopper or Pyrela purpusilla. It is also known as Al or Ghura. As far as systematic position is concerned, this belongs to class Insecta, order Hemiptera, family Fulguridae. It is a serious pest of sugarcane and commonly distributed throughout India. It causes great loss of sugarcane crop in Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. The major food plant is sugarcane but it also attacks wheat, maize, oat, barley, bajra and sorghum. If we talk about its general appearance, Pyrilla is a straw colored soft bodied leaf hopper. The adult has an elongated snout with piercing and sucking mouth parts. It has two pairs of wings on the dorsal side. The wingspan of male is 16 to 18 millimeter and 19 to 20 millimeter for the females. Overall length of the insect is 8 to 10 millimeter. It bears prominent red eyes. A pair of whitish brown anal process covered with the white wax are also present. As far as habits are concerned, the adults and nymphs live on the leaves. They are very active and suck cell sap. They jump from leaf to leaf on the slightest disturbance. Pyrilla screeches, a sticky, sweet, transparent fluid which is known as honeydew. The breeding is performed throughout the year. The egg laying is mainly done in April, May and October and November. As I have told you earlier that this insect breeds throughout the year, there are three stages of life cycle. First is egg, second is nymph and third is adult. The life cycle is completed in 40 to 60 days. In this slide you can see all the three stages of life cycle of Pyrilla. The eggs are ovoid, white to yellowish green and about 2 mm in length. The female hopper lays eggs in cluster of 300 to 500 In summer, egg laying is done at the lower surface of the leaves. That means from April to May, female hopper lays egg at the lower surface of the leaf. And during winter, 
that is October and November, it lays egg inside the leaf sheath. The eggs are covered by a white filamentous material secreted by the anal processes of the female. Second stage of life cycle is nymph. These eggs hatch into nymphs in 7 to 22 days after the egg laying in summers and it may be delayed in winters. The freshly hatched nymphs are cream colored, soon turn into pale brown color and have a pair of characteristic anal filaments. You can clearly see these anal filaments in this slide. Nymphs are very active and they suck cell sap of the leaves. Nymphs changes into adult in about 6 to 8 weeks in summers and this development delayed in the winters. So in winters it took 4 months to develop a nymph into an adult. While changing into adult it undergoes 5 molds. The adults are 8 to 10 mm long and are straw colored. Just after the molting, the adults are white colored, but later on their body turns straw colored. So eyes turn pale green and head develops a snout with a black spot on the posterior side. The interior area has numerous minute black spots. As far as females are concerned, they are 10 mm in length and 2.2 mm in breadth, whereas male measures 8 mm in length and 3.5 mm in breadth. Adult females are ready to mate after two days of emergence from the fifth nymphal instar and lays eggs mainly during the day. The lifespan of the male is 5 to 7 weeks and that of female is 5 to 8 weeks. So the entire life cycle is of 40 to 60 days and normally Four generations are recorded in a year. Again, you can see in this slide, this is the adult lays egg in cluster, which are having three to five hundred eggs in a cluster. These eggs hatch into the nymphs in seven to twenty-two days in summers, and this time may be delayed in winters. These nymphs, after five moldings, changes into adult. It took 6 to 8 weeks in summers and about 4 months in winter. And the whole life cycle is completed into 40 to 60 days. Now the damage. Both the nymphs and adults can damage by sucking the cell sap of the succulent leaves. As a result, the leaves dry up and turn pale. As I have told you earlier, that the insect secrete a sweet, sticky, transparent fluid known as honeydew. This honeydew attracts the harmful fungi which form the black sooty layer on the leaves and shoots. As a result, rate of photosynthesis is retarded, so the quality and quantity of the crop is affected. There is about 35% loss of the yield. Pyrella is a major pest in Bihar, Delhi, Haryana, Punjab, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Orissa. But in the recent years, its incidence has increased in the peninsular India also. The infection causes great loss to the yield to poor growth of the seed sets and difficulties in milling cane from affected plants. Sucking of sap from the leaves weakens the plant and reduces the sucrose contents sometime up to the 50%. The growth of the fungus capnodium species on the honeydew adversely affect the yield. Then the control of the pyrilla. It can be controlled by collection of the egg masses and destroying by burning or by burying. The resistant varieties of the sugar cane should be sown. Ratoon cropping should be avoided. The other graminous crop should not be in the vicinity so that these plants may not act as secondary host.
The infested crop should be dusted with the 5 to 10 percent BHC dust or spray of 0.1 percent endrine or 0.25 percent of endosulfan or 0.025 percent of phenytruthione or rogar. Dusting the plants with 10% aldrin or dialdrin also helps. The burning of trash helps in destroying unhatched eggs and overwintering nymphs. During pre monsoon, dusting the fields with HCH 5 to 10% at 20 to 30 kg per hectare or methyl parathion 2% at 12.5 kg per hectare with a rotary duster can be helpful. During pyrilla epidemics, aerial spraying of the insecticide must be done like Fentheon 506 ml per hectare, Melathion 500 ml per hectare, Phosphomidone 250 to 300 ml per hectare or Endosulfan 750 ml per hectare. The next important sugarcane pest is sugarcane white fly. Zoological name of this fly is Allurolobus barodensis. These are small, fragile, white to pale yellow in color with the prominent black eyes. Here in this slide you can see the adult fly and nymph. As far as systematic position is concerned, this fly belongs to class insecta order Hemiptera and family Allurodidae. Regarding the habits of this insect, these are very active and fragile insect. Their nymphs has piercing mouth parts with which they use to suck cell sap and cause severe damage to the plant. The female fly lays conical eggs in groups of 60 to 70 eggs near the midrib on the lower surface of the sugarcane leaves. Its life cycle has four stages, eggs, nymphs, pseudopupa and adult. Adults life is of only two days. Nymph grow and undergoes four instar within 25 to 30 days. So this stage is the longest stage in the life cycle. And this is the only damage causing stage of the pest. Main damage to sugarcane is caused by the nymphs by sucking the cell sap of the leaves. So the plants look pale yellow and the leaves remain unopened. Due to this sucrose content is decreased. The maximum damage occurs from July to November. It is notable that varieties with the broad and long leaves are more susceptible to this pest. And the white fly infestation retards cane growth and reduces sugar content. At 80% leaf infestation, 23 to 24% loss in cane yield is noted and about 2.9% units loss in sucrose occurs. The next pest is sugarcane top borer. Zoological name of this pest is Scirpophaga nivella. Adult modes are creamy or pure white in color with crimson colored anal tuft of hairs in females. You can see it clearly in this slide. Males are slightly smaller with a wing span of 25 to 30 mm. So, clear sexual dimorphism is present in this pest. Scirpophaga nivella belongs to class Insecta, order Lepidoptera, family Pyrelididae. As far as habits are concerned, these modes are more active during the night. The caterpillars of this pest are voracious and damage the crop adversely. The top poorers breeds from March to November. Eggs are elongated and oval in shape. They are laid in clusters of 30 to 60 eggs on the lower surface of the leaves of the sugarcane. In total, about 500 eggs are laid and the clusters of the eggs are covered by the brown tuft of hair. As far as adult lifespan is concerned, it is 4 to 5 days. 
It is one of the most destructive and major pest of sugarcane in Pakistan, India and China. Its active season is from March to November and after hatching, the young larvae bores into the leaf through the midrib and consequently the main shoot or the cane stalk. It hibernates in larval form when it has attained full growth. Pupation occurs through making a chamber with the special type of emergence hole at the position just above the node. Regarding the damage, caterpillar causes damage by boring into the 4 to 5 nodes of the top shoots. Due to this, leaves dry up and get curled forming dead hearts. It feeds upon growing buds, so plants growth is retarded. Due to all these activities, great loss to yield and quality of the sugar occur. Maximum damage is realized from April to July as it feeds on the sugarcane. As its name indicates, the top borer infests the top portion of the sugarcane plant. It completes some 4 to 5 numbers of generation in a year and all of them damage the crop. The earlier stages, first two generations, the young sugarcane plant have reddish streak together with the small holes in the plant due to its attack, which are clearly seen in this slide. If it attacks in the later stage of sugarcane plant development, it causes a special symptom called bunchy top, which you can see in the second picture. It not only lowers the yield of the crop but also deteriorates the quality and quantity of the juice. So it is clear that young larvae bore into the midrib leaving the red marking small holes on the leaves. Then the larvae tunnel in the upper portion of the stem resulting in drying of the central shoot causing the dead hearts. And then with the death of the central shoot side branches start growing from the lower node giving a characteristic bunchy top appearance to the plant. Then due to all these activities, quality and quantity of the juice is reduced. The next pest is sugarcane root borer. Zoological name is Emalocera depressella. You can see in this slide that mood is about 15 to 25 mm in length and is pale brownish in color. Its hind wings are white, shorter, and broader than the forewings. The forewings have a dark longitudinal strip on the each wing. This pest belongs to class Insecta, order Lepidoptera and family Pyralididae. As far as habits are concerned, the adult is nocturnal insect and female also lays eggs during night. Its caterpillars are voracious and main damage to the sugarcane is caused by this stage. It hibernates in winter in the roots. The female lays egg on the ground or on the leaves or stem in batches or as single egg. One female can lay 230 to 285 eggs on an average which are creamy white in color. Regarding the damage, the main damage causing stage is the caterpillar. These caterpillars feed on the stem below the soil. The main attack is on the young stem and the roots of grown-up sugarcane. Caterpillars form semicircular tunnels, so the young plants die and old ones dry up. It causes 10% reduction in the yield. Ratoons are mainly destroyed. You can see clearly in this slide how caterpillar bores into lower portion of the stem which is underground forms the semicircular tunnels which are known as dead heart which are very easy to pull out. So it causes yellowing of leaves and poor tilling in growth. The, the next pest is Gurdaspur borer. The zoological name of this pest is Bicetia stanilus. This pest is mainly present in Haryana, Punjab and Rajasthan and western Uttar Pradesh. Its only host is sugarcane. You can see this mode in the slide. It is grayish brown in color, 25 to 40 mm in length. 
a number of dark spots are present on the wings the hind wings are grayish and white and without spots as far as habits are concerned the adult is nocturnal insect and its life span is 4 to 5 days only the damage causing stage is the caterpillar stage as it bores into the young shoots and form the tunnels in the stem it pupate inside the tunnels two to three generations are observed in one year this pest infests the crop during the grand growth period july to september of the sugarcane regarding the damage the young larvae or the caterpillar enters top portion of the cane through the single hole just above the node they form tunnels in the stem they feed in groups by making spiral galleries which run upwards after a week or 10 days they attack the adjacent canes the larval duration is 21 to 27 days and the total life cycle is of 35 to 40 days so damage causing stage is the largest stage in the life cycle you can see here in the picture that these tunnels destroy the stem completely due to this sugarcane tops are dried and the heavy infestation causes damage up to the 60% next pest is gurdaspur borer the zoological name of this so this is all about the pests of sugarcane and now in this session we will discuss how different questions may be framed from this chapter these questions may be framed in three categories the first category is of very short answer type questions which you have to answer in two to three lines and these questions cover up the first compulsory question of your paper before telling about the questions i would like to tell you about that as per your syllabus life cycle and control of only pyrella purpusilla is in syllabus for other four pests only systematic position habits and nature of damage caused is to be studied now two types of question may be framed from this chapter one is very short answer type and other is short answer type so first of all very short answer type questions which you have to answer in two to three lines and we, this will cover up the first compulsory question of your paper so first question from this category is name two lepidopteran pests of sugarcane next is how can pyrella be controlled next is write about the mode of damage caused by gurdaspur borer next is name the various stages of life cycle of pyrella purpusilla next is what is honey dew next is enlist the habits of sugarcane top borer and the last question from this category is write the damage caused by white fly of sugarcane the next category of questions are short answer type questions which you have to answer in a single paragraph along with the supporting diagram first question from this category is write the classification of pyrella purpusilla and by citia stanellus next is describe the life cycle of pyrella purpusilla so here you have to describe the life cycle of leaf hopper third question is write about the damage caused by different pests of sugarcane so be careful while answering this question that you have to write the damage caused by all the five pests of sugarcane next question is differentiate between sugarcane top borer and sugarcane root borer the last question from this category is write systematic position habits and nature of damage of the sugarcane borers so do all the questions and send the answers to your teacher in your college all the best goodbye thank you before